I am Scott Kelly, retired NASA astronaut. Ask me anything. Hello Reddit. My name is Scott Kelly. I am a former NASA astronaut, a veteran of four space flights including a year living on the International Space Station that set the record for the single longest space mission by an American astronaut. And a participant in the twin study. I wanted to do another Ask Me Anything because I was astounded to learn that according to the 3M State of Science Index, nearly 40% of people think that if science didn't exist, their everyday life wouldn't be all that different. I'm here to talk more about why it's important that everyone values science, and appreciates the impact it has on our lives. I'm ready to answer questions about my time in space, the journey that got me there, despite initially being distracted in school, and uninterested in science and hear from you about how we get more people to appreciate and recognize the importance of science. Edit, thank you everyone for your questions. I enjoyed the discussion. And I'm excited to keep helping others appreciate the importance of science. Thanks for joining. A lot of astronauts, Chris Hadfield springs to mind, among others, have talked about how seeing Earth from space changes their perspective on life on Earth. Did you have a similar experience your first time up? After spending a long time in space you have a different perspective on our planet, and what it provides us and how we're all in this thing called humanity together. Hi Scott. I'm about halfway through your book and it is such a fascinating read. How realistic is it to think about a Mars colony in the next 50 years? Very realistic, but to quote my brother it's more about political science than rocket science, touché. No bucks, no buck rogers, the right stuff. Does space have a smell? I once heard it described as burnt chocolate chip cookies. It smells more like burnt metal. My question would be, how is it to sleep in space? It's hard because your level of relaxation is the same whether you're trying to sleep or work. You're not any more comfortable when it's time to go to sleep. For example on Earth when you sit you're more comfortable because of gravity. You can't do that in space. Scott. Thank you so much for doing this. I loved watching your journey through space, I'm a long time Twitter follower. What was your favorite place on earth to look down at from above? The Bahamas because it's such a big, brilliant, blue spot on the planet. How soon do you predict space tourism will become a reality for the masses? I think it will be a reality for some in a few years. I'm not sure about for the masses. I hope it develops along the same timeline as aviation did. In what ways did the Earth look different after you came back from your longest mission? Did the extended stay in space made the current events unfolding on Earth look meager? It's sad that most of the news that comes from Earth is bad news. When I got back, everything looked better. Earth has a lot to offer. I love this response most of all. Do you ever try to put objects down mid-air forgetting there's gravity? After my first flight, I had a tendency to want to that. I definitely tried to float out of bed to go to the bathroom. Wow. Scott, it's been a dream of mine from childhood to venture into space. I'll probably not get the chance to do that as life took me to a different route. I just love to say thanks for the things you've put your mind and body through in the hopes of dragging us closer to the stars. My question is, with private space companies now popping up, such as SpaceX, Blue Origin, etc. Do you think that they'll leapfrog NASA and other public space programs or does it seem more from your knowledge? that it would be more of a level playing field with information sharing? I think there are places where government are more capable, and others where private industry will excel. I think there are ways they can complement each other. Living for a whole year in space truly is an amazing feat. You take of how science affects our daily lives. What are some of the processes, and technologies of space and space travel that are already affecting us today? And what is your opinion companies taking over future space programs such as SpaceX, as opposed to having only government-run programs? Telecommunications, GPS, microprocessors all come from technologies of space. Surely, you know lots of people want to become astronauts. What about you made you the right candidate in the eyes of your supervisors? I was a test pilot in the Navy and I had a good reputation. But more than that I think there is a lot of luck and timing involved. I was fortunate enough to attend your lecture in Hutchinson. I was wondering if you got the opportunity to tour the Cosmosphere while you were there? If so, did you enjoy it? Yes I did. And I would like to go back. It's a great museum that tells a really interesting story. With the tense international tensions and the ISS close to retirement, what do you think the near future will be in manned space exploration? I don't know, it can be anything we want it to be. It's up to us. 
Thank you Commander Kelly for doing this. I am a biologist studying exercise. And circadian rhythms in particular how exercise can change circadian rhythm in the skeletal muscle. I am also a big fan of spaceflight. As astronaut on board the ISS, you see 16 sunrises and sunsets per day the work schedule is tight and you probably have changing sleeping schedules in a never really dark environment. How much do you feel the effect of circadian disruption that comes along with the challenges of living and working in space? Is there anything that you do to cope with the effects caused by circadian disruption such as sleeping problems, reduced alertness and concentration? Since your return from space do you appreciate a good night's sleep on regular basis more than before? We try to avoid changing our sleep schedule. And we have window covers that can make the space station dark. Generally at the end of the working day, I would dim the lights before turning them off. Now we have lights that can be adjusted for the purpose of helping with the circadian rhythm. Hello there Mr. Kelly thank you for doing this AMA. What was the most uncomforting thing about space? The fluid in your body gets redistributed to your head, so you have this congested feeling for a year. If a space station had an inner and outer rotating ring providing the equivalent of gravity, what g-force would you want each to provide? And how much time would you want to spend in them versus the zero-g part of the station? I would have it less than Earth's gravity, but I would live mostly in gravity because things are easier to do. I would visit the zero-gravity part for fun. Being an astronaut has always been a dream of mine ever since childhood. If I do not go through a military route in order to get there what do you recommend I should do? I'm currently a dual major in physics and electrical engineering and I work for Boeing. I plan on getting my PPL within the next two years. Am I on the right track or should I branch out and find more things? Thank you. You seem to have the minimum qualifications. NASA likes people who have done well in their jobs, but they also like people who have other skills like leadership, teamwork, ability to work with your hands. Find ways to get more of those skills if you don't already have them. Do you think the world and humanity would be different if everyone could spend a month or so in the ISS, looking down at the planet? Absolutely. Looking down at the planet, you don't see political borders. You see one planet of which we all belong to. You see the fragility of our atmosphere that is everything protecting our beautiful Earth. Thanks for your questions. Much thanks Commander Kelly, this is quite possibly one of my most looked forward to AMAs. I do have quite a few questions to ask an astronaut of your caliber but I want to keep this one fairly general. And allow you to speak both from experience and personality. The question being, what would be your opinion on the infamous Fermi paradox? Do you think it's likely that we're alone in the universe as intelligent life? Or do you rather subscribe to other theories such as zoo theory or the great filter? If possible, I would love to use your answer as an opinionated source for a project I'm currently doing for English in which I am discussing the Fermi Paradox, and the likely future for manned space travel. Much thanks Commander Kelly. And it's great to have you back on the ground. I think it's likely there is intelligent life in the universe. Although I'm not a big believer in the idea aliens have visited Earth. Does it offend you that people believe the Earth is flat or do you understand their point of view? I think a lot of those flat earthers don't believe the earth is flat. The risk is when you discount something that is clearly fact, it causes people to question other scientific facts and that can be dangerous. What is the best advice to give to my 17 year old daughter about making a huge goal and going for it? She was accepted at a top school with top grades and concerned with the challenge of completing a degree in biochemistry. A giant leap is really a number of small manageable steps. Take one at a time. I don't know about that. I have it on good authority that one small step is also one giant leap. Also while in space if you weren't busy on research what would you do in your spare time? And did you pick up any habits in space that you brought back to Earth? Part of our job is research, part is taking care of the space station to live and work up there. It takes time. I didn't have an incredible amount of spare time, but when I did, I wrote, I read. When I go camping my space habits are very present, keep track of your stuff and your trash don't lose anything, etc. Hi Scott, thank you for doing this AMA. Questions. What skills do you think are extremely useful when traveling to space? Does Russian space food really taste better than American space food? Your book was amazing. I really enjoyed reading it and the pictures were breathtaking. Teamwork, technical competency, honesty. Russian space food is different and it's great to have variety. I read that your genes are no longer identical to your twin brothers. So I guess my question is, is Annihilation non-fiction? My genes are the same, 
What changed was gene expression. I'm not familiar with that movie. What does it mean for your gene expression to change? Think of your genes as an orchestra and my brother's genes as the exact same orchestra. Change in expression is the orchestra's playing a slightly different tune. Thanks for watching till the end.